Questions are tough ones. Why, Why do, we, do we, play? we play? Am I asking you or are you asking me? I'm asking you. Okay. <laughs> no, look, it's uh, obviously for me, it was something to. My parents kept me off the streets. Um, myself, my brothers uh, put us in a football team to, to mix in with different races, different religions, and cultures. Uh, so I was a young boy, uh, always listened to my coach. Uh, my fondest memory was. Uh, one of my first ones was with my coach. He told me to go out on the pitch, stand there, and don't move. So I was always a listener. I stood there. I didn't move, not even to kick the ball. So even though my brothers and sisters were yelling at me to, to kick the ball, I was definitely listening. So yeah, look, for me, it was more you know, to stay off the street, uh, get to, to, to know different people, different races and religion. And I think that was the most important thing. How about you? Mine's quite similar. Uh, my older brother played before me, so I was just the younger sibling running around the field and mum and dad thought it would be a great idea to sign me up and obviously there was kids from schools at a local club so I joined in with the boys straight away and was the only girl on the team so I used to run around with the boys and uh, just grew up playing and loving it and then eventually made my way into the, the youth rep set up and played with Manly United through my whole youth league and then eventually just made my way through to first grade and then got picked up for a W League squad and um, I think like for women's football there's always been a bit of a gap between the men's football and women's football uh, but we're obviously heading in the right direction getting the support from the PFA and you know obviously helping the women's game get more exposure even on TV broadcasting and stuff like that so we're definitely moving in the right direction but there is still a, a long way to go you know obviously the the pay gaps quite large and the men can usually make a living off just playing football and a lot of the girls in our team especially are mothers or come straight from work and come straight to training so it is a it is a large gap and I think that if we just keep working towards and obviously getting the men behind us and supporting us and the, also the women supporting women we, we can eventually like bridge the gap between both of that. Yeah, to add to that I've made a lot of friends uh, in, in the W League and I've seen it go from where it was to where it is and I totally agree with you where totally off the pace uh, when it comes to women's football and especially what you girls are achieving um, on the international stage with the W League. Um, yeah, the, the Matildas, what they're doing is, is amazing and you know, one of the favourites for the World Cup. Um, uh, us men, we're probably never the favourites. Uh, but yeah, look, I, I totally agree. Uh, it's, just, it's good to see what like, Sam Kerr is doing and what she's earning, but hopefully that can rub off onto the rest of you guys. So yeah, look, I totally agree. Um, I've kind of seen it go from girls not getting paid at all, and as you mentioned, some finish school, some finish work, straight straight to training, where and then they expect the maximum from you guys. Where, so trust me, we're yeah. with you guys. Um, the, I'm I'm with the PFA uh, as well. I'm one of the delegates, and it, it's a topic we we really take very serious. And yeah, look, I totally agree with you. The good thing is now there's, I remember as you mentioned before when you were a junior you're the only girl playing amongst the boys. Where now there's actual girls teams happening, um, a lot of people encouraging the young girls to play. And, uh, and even for the, the young boys, you know, they've got a lot to aspire to. Um, we were speaking about PFA before. For me, uh, the wages we're earning at the moment, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be in 20 years probably sitting on the couch, an old man not being able to walk because my knees are busted. But you know, th there'll be a kid that's just starting out earning probably what I was earning at the top of my career. So we're trying to build the game for the future of these kids. Mm -hmm. So look, hard work, determination, um, and Australian football is just heading in the right direction. And as we spoke to now, there's a lot more opportunity for the women. At least we've got a women's league. I think uh, the W League's probably the, the first, uh, or correct me if I'm wrong, one of the first leagues actually made for women mm -hmm. on a professional level. Uh, it's good to see that it's on free-to-wear TV, and hopefully we can get all the games on, on TVs. And, you know, these kids aspire to be like us. Uh, there's no secret about, about that. So, yeah, look, just keep working hard. Listen to your parents uh, is the best advice I can give because mm -hmm. um, it's got me to where I am today. How about you? What's some advice you can give the kids? I completely agree with you. I think that 
now there's a huge pathway for women's football and like obviously we have a lot more role models to look at especially with the success of the Matildas and the W League doing so well and also us getting some pretty great international players coming into the league it's just making the league even more special and uh, I think it just allows younger girls to come and support women's sport and women's football and just come and cheer them on and you know aspire to be like one of the female footballers in today's society because they really are great role models and you know women's football is just building and building and like what you said I think you just need to grow up and work extremely hard and be determined and stick at it because it is going in the right direction and you know the girls that are in the Matildas now are building a foundation for Australian women's football. How much have you sacrificed to get to where you are today? You touched on it a little bit earlier. But... Um, yeah I think I've sacrificed a lot to get where I am. I know that uh, a lot of the female footballers have and male footballers have sacrificed a lot yeah. to become a professional footballer. Uh, you know, I've done things like sat my HSC in China and, <laughs> you know, wasn't at school much, was at a lot of football under 20s camps and I wouldn't have changed it for the world, but you do miss out on a lot. I had to fly back from my own graduation, then fly straight back to an under 20s camp, so I couldn't even really celebrate my graduation with my family, but I wouldn't have changed it, you know, that I want to be a professional footballer and you've got to do what you have to do. So you, those sacrifices do um, help you along the way and I think that has helped me get to where I am. Yeah, look, for me I feel a lot of the people outside look at the glitz and glamour of football. They look at, you know, the clothes you wear, the car you drive, the jewellery you're wearing, but they don't see the sacrifices. For example, growing up, you know, I'm, I missed out on a, a, a lot of events with my mates, for example, yep. parties and stuff like that because I had a soccer game yep. or training. Um, then the professional career started, I moved away from home, so I missed a lot of weddings. Yeah. Um, I even missed my own brother's engagement yeah. because we, uh, I got called into the national team. Um, I even missed my own brother's funeral um, because I was actually in Dubai with the Socceroos. So talking about sacrifices, sometimes it's, there's not much you can do about it. Um, I remember when my brother passed away, was, I found out in the morning in Dubai, but uh, it already happened, they'd already buried him here because they knew the cause of death because he was sick. Um, yeah, weddings, I've missed a lot of weddings um, and then as, as you mentioned you missed your graduate, uh, the, the graduation party, you couldn't really enjoy it as much as you would have, have liked to. So yeah, for us we know what it, what it took to sacrifice. A lot of my friends didn't sacrifice these things and didn't get to the level we were at. Um, yeah, so there's a lot that goes, goes to it. It's the unseen, no one ever sees that stuff yeah. and then you have a bad game and no one knows what's going on in your yeah. life. But we do, and that's the beauty of football. Yeah. Uh, every team I've been at, you become a family. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I wouldn't change that for the world. Um, every decision I've made, I don't regret. So, I was grateful that we had an NSL, which was the old National League, yep. and then that folded, but then there was an A-League that they put a lot of money into to start up. So, um, I remember when we started, you know, the, the salary cap was 1.6 or 1.8 million across 20 players. There was no reserve grade at the time, so, you had to have three under 20 plays or four, can't remember. So we kind of had a platform where I feel where we started with the W League, and it's not my decision to make, but I feel that, you know, you guys had to start from here, where we kind of started up here a little bit, uh, and that's where I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree. Uh, I'm not sitting there saying that it should have been started at the same sort of money, but for what I'm speaking about now at the Wanderers, it's good to see what they're doing, not only for women's football, but junior football. Um, the facilities we're going to have here are going to be second to none. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of Australian clubs should aspire to. Shouldn't just be that, that one team, the men's team. Yes, it generates a lot of money through memberships and jersey sales and, and everything else, but you've got you to make it fair for everyone. Um, I remember for, in, in the A-League, because we don't have these junior teams, Kids don't really aspire to play, for example, for a, an Adelaide United or uh, a Newcastle Jets because they're playing at their local club all, year, all their life and then all of a sudden they get picked up by our club. So there's no passion, I, I feel. Um, when I was younger, I played for Sydney Olympic, so I only wanted to play for my club. Yeah. And I feel that's what needs to be done in the A-League. Yeah. Um, have, have a junior system where all the junior kids aspire to play for us, want to be, have that love for the club and for the, for the W League or the women's football in general, I feel it's the same too. They should have the same pathway for the, for the girls as well. Yeah, 
I think respect is huge, especially being a younger player. Obviously, heading into the W League, uh, I was probably, I think I was 16 when I debuted, and I had a lot of more experience than older players around me. And obviously, heading into that kind of environment, respect needs to be there. You need to respect the older girls in the team who have been there and actually paved the way for you and allowed you the opportunity and who have really helped you as leaders on the field to feel comfortable and be a part of a team. So I think that respect is a huge thing. And obviously uh, the involvement of the men's club with the women's club now, and you can see the respect that you boys have for us as the W League, it definitely goes a long way. It just shows that, you know, there's no male club, there's no female club, yeah, it's just women. one club. Yeah. So it's just great to see that the involvement of both men's and women's um, allows the club to just be an even stronger unit and more as one unit. So it's great to see and yeah, I probably would just, the advice I'd give to my younger self is to always just be humble and respect everyone around you, no matter who they are, what they play. You know, they're there for a reason. They've made their own way. They've had their own path and they deserve to be there. So just respect everyone that's around you. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that one. Respect is the biggest thing. I'm glad the generation I come through when I was younger was really old fashioned. So I kind of learned a lot of the respectful traits. You know, you'd, even if you were in the right and one of the older players told you otherwise, you'd, you'd always agree and just never back chat. And I feel, I wouldn't say we're lo it's lost, but we're slowly losing that. Um, you know, but for me, I'm, I'm glad the way I was brought up um, in the football world uh, to always respect and appreciate what I do. Um, I've, we didn't have much opportunity when we were younger to, so when I first started the A-League, there was no reserve grade system. So I had to play good for my state league team at the time to get picked up for an A-League team where now we do have a youth system. So, you know, you do semi good in that, you get pushed into, into us. and. It should be an honour to, to be involved in a, in a football team. You know, there's so many people that want to do what we're doing. And I look at it as a, in, a, in a pyramid form. We all start down here, mm -hmm. as you mentioned before, some of us make those state teams or go on to a better level. And then we all go to uh, A-League, for example, professional league. And then we all aspire to be that great player that's played uh, for our country or yeah. whatever it is, or overseas in the big league. But only so, so little of us make it. And, I feel that when you're playing football, you know, just make the most of it. But yeah, the biggest thing is, uh, is respect. And I feel the way you carry yourself on a football field is the way you are off it as well. So um, yeah, for us, it's, as, as players, we, we have bad days, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's also the respect around the outside now, social media and everything that's going on. I, I feel a lot of people have kind of lost that respect where there's comments being made or uh, on social media, even at stadiums that you know, a bit disrespectful or uh, racist or uh, stuff like that. And I feel the A-League's in, in a good place when it comes to that. I don't feel we're, we're doing so bad when it uh, comes to that, but to have it at zero is, is the goal. Yeah.